All right, so since some people wanted to try something a little bit different, a little bit more complicated, and some people can't use the Pixlr E because they're on a phone or a tablet, I wanted to show you this program called Metabang Paint. It's another free program. You cannot use it on Chromebooks. That's the main drawback for most of us. You can, however, use it on tablets and cell phones. It is a program you have to download. So you go to their website, metabankpaint.com. It's available in different languages. So if English is not a language you're comfortable with, you can change it to Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, a few other languages. I only speak English right now, so I'm leaving it English. You do have to download it, like I said. So there's this big download button. So you click on that. It'll take you to this page where you can pick what type of operating system you have. So most computers have either Windows or Mac. And then if you scroll further down, there's iPad, iPhone, or Android. Those are for phones or tablets. So click whichever one works, click download. Once it's installed, you'll have an icon on your desktop. That you can click on to open the program. This is what it's going to look like when you first open it. Um, it has a little advertisement for drawing lessons, which are very useful. Once you close that, it takes you to this page, which lets you create. You don't have to log in or sign up. You can if you want to. It doesn't cost anything. There's different contests you can do. But let's focus on the Let's Draw area. There's quite a few different options. There's more options than with Pixlr E. There's Illustrate, Draw Manga, Open File. If you're working with something that you closed the program, now you want to go back to, there's Recent Files, and then Open from Cloud. What I want you to do is click Illustrate. That lets you create a new piece of artwork, new canvas or paper, whatever you want to consider on the computer. And there's two things I want you to change on here. I want you to make sure that it says standard. Start with standard. It's a little bit more simple to start off with. Background color. Make sure that it is set to color, not transparent. It has to be set to color. And this box here shows white. That's going to make it look as much like a canvas or a piece of paper as possible. Once those are selected, hit OK. Now I have my blank sheet of paper, my blank canvas that I can work on. Now the options in this look a little bit different. You still have the toolbar on the left hand side that has a lot of different tools. It's got our brush tool or our paint tool or in Pixlr E it's the draw tool. It's got the eraser tool, the dot tool. The only ones I want you to worry about right now are the brush tool and the eraser tool. The brush tool lets you draw. So right now I can see options for my brush in actually four different places because it's a lot more flexible and the brush tool in this program works just the same as both the draw tool and the pen tool in Pixlr E. So it kind of combines those two tools into one. This shows you a preview of what your brush will look like. You have your brush control. So play with those, they're a lot of fun. This second bar that's at 100% right now, it's not labeled, but that's your opacity. That's how much you can see through your line. So if I lower it, it starts to become more see-through and you can see a preview of what it looks like up here. I'm gonna keep that at 100. Now to change what your brush tip looks like, you actually go down here. Right now it's selected to pencil, brush, pencil. But I can change it to pen and it can work a little bit differently. 
sharp pen, G pen. So there's a lot of different options down here. It's actually got quite a list of different pens, even ones that are transparent on the inside or white on the inside and black on the outside. Stipple pen. You even have some paint options. You've got Sumi, which is a type of ink, watercolor, so you can do effects like watercolor on the computer, acrylic, which is another type of paint. It's just a little bit of a thicker paint, airbrush, blur, sparkle brush. I know some of you will love that. You can put sparkles on it. There's a lot of options that you're going to have to play with. Now to change the color, we have these two boxes up top. Right now the black box is selected, so that's the color that my brush is going to be. If I click that once, it changes to the white, so it just switches them, and I can paint with white. To change the color, we have the slide bar. The color picker is already up there. You don't have to open it in another window. So you can slide this up and down for the different colors. And it changes what you see in this box. Once you have something you kind of like in there, you have to click in this box, anywhere in this box. And that's going to change the color. If I were just to leave it down here, my little dot is down here. That's still black. I want to change the color, I have to put it somewhere else. So I can change it to purple. Now with this, if you want to change the size, that's actually on the right hand side. Has one up to 1000. And if you look, it changes. There's a circle on my screen that changes size when I move my cursor over each of these. That's showing me how big the brush is. So if I set it to 100, it's going to be big. It's going to cover my entire picture. I don't think I want it quite that big. Let's change the color. But I like the purple background. Let's do that green one nice. Yeah, it'll look nice. Brush control. To be fair, I haven't quite figured that out. I'm thinking that it will probably be a little bit different if I use a tablet. Right now I'm using my mouse and it doesn't really seem to change it much. But up here I want you to look at some of the tools. These are called snap tools up here. There's parallel snap, crisscross snap, vanishing point snap, radial snap, circle snap, curve snap, curved line, or ellipse snap. What this does is this gives you guidelines. Sometimes it's hard to make straight lines. This will let you make straight lines. Wherever you start your drawing, whether I move my cursor up or down, it's still going to stay on that line. It's still going to be a straight line. And there's different ones you can use. Uh, the vanishing point snap, you have to pick your vanishing point. So now I have my vanishing point over here. And now when I draw, my lines go back towards that vanishing point. I'll talk about vanishing points in another video. Radial. Radial means it's in a circle, basically. It's lines radiating out from a circle. So you can have a lot of fun with these. Now if you're looking for something a little bit like the pen tool in Adobe Photoshop, 
believe this curve snap will actually get you pretty close. Select two points, and then it's going to change depending on where your third point is, and so on. I don't think it's going to be exactly like the pen tool in Adobe Photoshop. It's been quite a while since I used that. But it's a good way to get nice curves. Oh, and I closed. So there's a lot you can do. You just need to play with it. I need to play with it too. But that's what we do. We play, we experiment. There we go. And now I can trace that line. Once I close this, I have my line. But the guideline's gone.